We are again, it's Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. So proud to be with you today. Uh, we're going to look in Matthew 26 today. We're going to ask a question. Where did we find Jesus most of the time? Where did we find him? If he wasn't in the garden praying to the Father, or if he wasn't uh, ministering to one or two people, or if he wasn't ministering to a whole group, or if he wasn't in a training session with his disciples, or if he wasn't at a meal uh, at a particular table, where was he during his life? He said, you know, that the uh, birds have nests, the foxes and the conies, they have holes, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head but on a rock. He owned nothing. When he walked away from Bethlehem of Judea, and he walked away from his father's carpenter shop at the age of 30, he walked out into the country with nothing but his sandals and his robe and a cloak. And that's what he walked out with. And that's the way he, he I'm sure that he had a staff. And as he walked, he walked away, leaving behind that life, going to the life God called him to go to, which was headed directly to the cross, but he had a path he had to follow. That path was uh, put in uh, the annals of God before the foundation of the earth. There was no surprises to God. It was no surprise to God that the devil came and deceived Eve. It's never been a surprise to God. God created every living, every living thing. I, I could go in my mind's eye right now. I, I guarantee you there's not a scientist, there's not a human being on this earth smart enough to tell you how that a tree can grow up 30 feet high, a limb can grow out of that tree, grow straight out for 30 feet, have leaves and bear uh, nuts and stand up to the wind and all kinds of things and it comes straight out of that tree and it does not break off and it stands up against the weather and everything. There's not a man alive <coughs> that could even develop the, the uh, big, great, huge metal uh, things that they put out over the highway and they put lights on them. It took them years and years and years and years to design that thing to where it wouldn't collapse, where it wouldn't fall. And even now, the wind whipping it back and forth and up and down, it gets a thing called metal fatigue. Metal fatigue. When it gets metal fatigue, it breaks. Poof. Why do you think they use wooden telephone poles? Drive through any state that uses poles and see the majority of all poles are wood. And they're wood, great tall wooden poles that hold massive, massive amounts of wire <coughs> and weight. And God made that little tree. He grew that tree from the ground and he grew it to be one of the strongest, absolute, positively strongest piece of material upon this earth is a tree. And after you cut it, shave it down, and I watched a program in Canada where they shave them down and they make these telephone poles as much as 100, 110 feet tall, and they stick them in the ground 15 feet, and they stand there for years and years and years and years and years and carry weight and wind and rain and storms and hail and everything you can throw at that piece of wood, that tree, and it's standing there. Hey, it is a tree that God created. The molecules in it. Hey, I've got one we took down in my yard, a huge, massive tree. Do you know that the, the, in the root ball and everything, it's so knurled that the chainsaw won't even cut it. It's so knurled, it's like cutting stone. At night, you put your saw in it and it's just f sparks flying from it. It is so knurled, grown every way. You, you can't destroy it. You can't push it up with a bulldozer. You can't tear it up. And, uh, and when you burn it, you can't burn it. You burn for weeks and weeks and weeks and you can't get it to burn up. It just... It, it takes hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to burn it up. Listen, 
God made that tree. He made those molecules. He made that thing to do what it does, to live like it does, to stand up against. And you know, the Bible said, are you a tree planted by the rivers of living water? Are you a good tree with a good root? When the wind blows, it makes you stronger? Are you a tree that is made stronger by the wind, made stronger by the storms, when it twists your branches and works them back and forth, and this knot comes up by the tree and it's just knurled a, a little extra strength into that limb? Wow. God knows what he's doing. The eye, they have never, there's not been one human being alive yet that has ever been able to say how exactly the eye works. Oh, there are people who think they're smart enough so they know exactly how the eye works, but they don't. Because God said he was the one that put the light in the eye. He was the one that put the light in the eye. He's the one who put the light in the eye. Nobody's been able to figure that out yet. Oh, they figured out how it works, but they hadn't figured out how it was made. Listen, the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servant and delivered unto them his goods. Jesus Christ came and delivered unto you and I some goods. These goods he delivered unto us are supposed to be passed on. They're not supposed to be buried in the ground. They are called talents in the Bible here in Matthew 25. And he said, unto one gave he five talents, to another uh, gave he uh, two talents, and to another gave he one. To every man according to his severe ability, and straightway took his journey. Man, am I happy about this scripture. I'm going to tell you this. According to each man's ability. Who knows a man's ability? Who knows the tree? Who knows the trees? God knows them. Who knows all the birds? God knows them. He knows every sparrow that hits the ground. God knows them. And he knows you. And how much more is he interested in you? And he's given you a talent. Do you know what your talent is? Have you any idea today what your talent is? If, if you don't, you need to get started and try to figure it out. Well, you say, well, what if I make a mistake? Well, what if you do? You're going to find out, maybe. This wasn't your talent. <laughs> I tried a, a many, I'm 73 years old, and I've tried many, many things in my life I found out weren't my talent. <laughs> and uh, you're going to find the same thing. You are going to find the same thing. He said, and, and unto one gave he the five talents. He said, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Wow, he doubled his money. He doubled those talents, whatever they were, whether they were money whether they were the ability to win souls. Did he, did he go out and God said, I'm going to give you the ability to win souls, and he won five souls, and God said, now you've got five, let's see what you can do. And, and he went out and he doubled that, and then he got ten. He got ten somethings. It says here they were talents. That's a piece of change. But God wants us to put the change where it belongs, that's in his house, in his storehouse. Uh, then he had received, okay, likewise, uh, he that had received two, he also gained two others. Wow, he doubled his too. Has anybody ever entrusted you with something and you doubled it? Has anybody ever entrusted you with something and you doubled it? That's pretty good. That's a much, much better, better return than the world would give you today for your money in a bank or anything. If God has given you the ability to double talents, use those talents and double them. How, how as a poor man do I use the talents God gave me? A big majority of those talents go into God's work 
and he gives me abundantly above, more and above that which I could possibly go out and buy. And uh, I have the proof around me that God, when I, when I follow the Lord, he gives me stuff that I need. And uh, verse 17, uh, and likewise, now verse 18, but he that received the one went and digged in the earth, hid it. Hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord, uh, the, uh, the servant, cometh back to reckon with them. And so he that received the five talents came <coughs> and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me these five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I shall make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou in to the joy of the Lord. Wow. <clears throat> you just changed the whole picture when you read that verse. The whole picture has a just that says, if you take this salvation that God gave you and you pass it on and you double it and you triple it and you add to it, that one day you are going to be made a you're going to be called well done and you're going to be made a ruler <laughs> over many things in the kingdom of God. That's what he's saying. That's exactly what he's saying here. And uh, are you going to be one ruled over in the kingdom of God or are you going to be a ruler in the kingdom of God? The course is always going to be a group of being ruled over <clears throat> and there's always going to be that group of rulers. You can make your choice today what you're going to be for eternity. I'm not talking about just on this earth. I'm talking about for eternity. Okay. <clears throat> Verse 22. He also that had received the two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. And Verse 23 says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Are you faithful over a few things? Am I faithful over a few things? I can honestly say there are a few things in my life I'm fairly faithful with. And there are many that I'm not. So we need to be careful to be faithful with all things as possible. And as thou hast been faithful. I will make thee ruler over many things. And to thou into the joy of thy Lord. Verse 24 now. Then he which received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strode. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast thy is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strown. Thou oughtest therefore to have put thy money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto that which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But for him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye unprofitable servant into utter darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. My friends, if you read this scripture, you take a good look at it. You can sit in a church house and die and go to hell. Are you a, a fruit bearing tree? Are you bringing forth something for that which God gave you? He gave you a talent. 
He gave you the talent of salvation. He is expecting you to bring somebody with you. At least double, at least one more or two. Don't die outside of what God has for you. I've had people. I've had, I've had people ask me, Peter. I, I can't understand this Bible. I can't understand it. You can't understand it if you haven't got in. You say, but I've been in church. I even been a Sunday school teacher. But have you got in? Have you really got in? Have you really asked Jesus into your heart? Has Jesus ever failed? Are you failing? If you're failing, how can you say? Jesus is leading me and I'm failing. There's a problem with that. Jesus never failed. He was in the house of Simon the leper in chapter 26. He healed that leper. He had that lady come over there and anoint him for burial. Anoint his feet with that great oil, that alabaster box of oil. And, and, and how she was in the right place at the right time. Are you taking what God gave you and using it? in the right place at the right time. You know, my time has come and gone, and I must uh, check out for now, and I will see you next time. This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word.